Duncan. I'm the uh, Deputy Governor of Skana. Quite a fancy thing to put in your business card. Uh, I've been also talking about sustainability uh, in the context of the region of Skana. I'm really happy about this. I'm absolutely passionate about green growth, green transports and green infrastructure. Uh, so honouring the theme of this conference, I'm also going to try to link that with innovation in a regional context. Uh, and I might be a bit biased, uh, but I think that Skåne does offer world-class quality of life. Um, we have a beautiful landscape here. Um, we have a, a, a coastline, short distances, not only between our cities, but also to Denmark and to Germany. Um, the potential is huge, but here, as many places elsewhere, we have seen the consequences of climate change. We had a really hot uh, summer last year, a shortage of water that is already, already today starting to influence the farmers yet again. Um, we have seen volatile weather, uh, rising sea levels, floodings. Large part of our beaches in Skåne have actually been swept away with the sea. I think it's safe to say that it's high time that we start addressing these issues systematically and in all aspects of our uh, governance. So what can, oh sorry, what can Skåne as a region do? We sort of tucked in, in between the national government and the local governments. And this is the competences of our region, the region of Skåne. And as you can see here, the main area is public health. But we also have the public transportation system and also regional development in, in a more general uh, <coughs> aspect of it. So, against that background, how can a region like Skåne, tucked in between the national and the local, how can we work with sustainability? How can we be an agent in this green shift? And the answer, in my opinion, lies in combining sustainability with innovations. And I'm really happy uh, about uh, the fact that Skåne has raised the bar when it comes to climate targets. We have the ambition that Skåne is going to be fossil free when it comes to our own transports. At the beginning of this year we actually uh, reached that goal. All of our public transports in Skåne are now fossil free. I think that's quite an achievement and we're way ahead of the national targets in this regard. Yeah. And in some cities, like Skåne, for example, all of the public transports are completely electrified. And major cities, Ista, Pelleboy, are now trying to, to do the same thing. Um, do we settle with this? Far from it. Having reached this goal, we now want to push the boundaries further of being a sustainable region. And how can we achieve this? By turning to the innovation sector. And this is just a quick glance of the regional innovation system. I'm not going to dwell into the details of it. I'm sure you're going to hear more about it during this week. But as you can see here, we have a large number of agents, the universities, the industries, the companies, places like this, individuals that make a powerful force behind driving, for a powerful force behind driving change forward when it comes to sustainability. And how do you get successful in driving change? You find your strengths and you specialise. And as Mia said beforehand, uh, we have three major areas in Skåne where we specialise and where we drive innovation. So it's uh, smart sustainable cities, personal health and smart materials. I think it's fair to say that we are internationally very competitive when it comes to these areas. And what I would like to stress with this system is that when you specialise and when you combine it with sustainability, you can be very, very successful in, drive, in being an agent in driving change. So let me take one example when it comes to mobility. Um, let's see, I'm sure you're going to hear more about this later. So, as I said, public transportation is on is fossil free. We have an electrified fleet in a number of cities, which is all fantastic. It gets even better when we add innovations. So take Lance Corona. Since a couple of months back, the city's public transportation is completely electrified. Um, how do you charge the buses? Well, you have to um, drive them to these stations where you charge them while standing still. Uh, the problem being, it takes time, <laughs> and time is valuable. How can we do this better? Well, can we charge them while they're driving? Let's try. 
So that is actually what is going to be happening just around the corner from here, and I'm pointing in all directions because I'm from Malmö, not Luna, but somewhere around here. Uh, we're going to start testing uh, charting buses, like the buses in Lanskona, while driving. So this is a high-tech electric road uh, that we are now setting up our, our sort of testing ground here in Lund. It's a bit unfair to Lance Clone, actually. It's Lund and Lance Clone, I should say, on the bus here, uh, with air light seed. And if successful, I am absolutely certain that this would revolutionize the mobility sector. It ex significantly extends the driving range of electric cars, big cars, buses, and it also reduces the need uh, of large batteries. And this is the kind of project where I really want my region to be, where we push the boundaries further and forward towards a sustainable society, and where we implement innovations directly into our own business and organization, and in this case, in the public transport. And why is it so important that we, that we as a region stay focused on mobility and the transport sector? Well, one thing that is special with Skåne is that it's a border region, and that we cooperate very closely with our neighbors. This is one of those networks, the stream network, extending from Oslo all the way down to, to Hamburg. So, the importance of this is that, just as often as I sit down with my colleagues from Halland or Gothenburg or Stockholm, I sit down at the negotiating table with my colleagues from Denmark, uh, Hamburg, Germany, Norway. We really are one integrated cross-border region here. And the potential is in this you can all imagine. Um, not least because of this. This is the Fermat Belt Fixed Link. It's a planned immersed tunnel that is uh, proposed to connect the Danish island of Lolland with the German island of Salman. There will be a direct railway and highway link between northern Germany and Denmark going to Copenhagen. I don't even think we have started to understand the full consequences and benefits of this link for South Sweden. It will completely change the way we move, trade and transport goods across our countries. And my hope is that we use the time from today until the Fama Belt fixed link is built to explore all possible aspects of uh, a transnational sustainable mobility of society. A number of questions arises. How do we make sure that the electrified heavy traffic that crosses from Germany to Denmark to Sweden can be charged in all countries? How can we learn from Norway in how they have built up uh, an infrastructure of charging stations for electric cars? How can we take advantage of the bioeconomy in Sweden? How can we make it relevant when it comes to mobility outside of our borders? How do we commercialize innovations that come out of our universities and put them to use in the Swedish and German car industry? And finally, and the hardest one, how do we get Stockholm to realize the huge impact another connection across the Ersen Strait could have for South Sweden when the Fermat Belt fixed link is built? Yeah. <laughs> So these are all questions that I want to explore with many of you over the coming years, hopefully, uh, being a political organisation. Um, and it's also on that note that I would like to, to finish and perhaps returning to the question why we need mobility in the first place. Thank you. Great presentation, and it's fantastic to hear that Skåne is uh, way ahead when it comes to uh, bus uplink free public transportation. I think we should have put that one extra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is the secret sauce of Skåne? I think that's been a wide political understanding of the need to, to start addressing the climate change and the need to. Uh, be a fossil free society and whether that's electrification or it's bioeconomy or what it is but we need to set targets and work systematically towards them. Yeah. Because you said you had a sharp focus on the free areas and you've been uh, driving adopting to base change agents is that your like key success factors that you could export to other regions? I think you should ask the persons here uh, but I think that's one of the factors you specialize where you, you where you're competitive and you uh, you work together with the, pol the political side needs to go to, to the universities, to the companies, to the startup scene, and see where can we where can we work together, which areas are we competitive in, and how can we drive change when it comes to sustainability in our own organisations. 
It's because, you know, time is of essence when it comes to fighting climate changes. So is that easy or difficult in an organization as, as a region? I think it's... I think it's easy. Now, we, you have the Paris Agreement, you have an understanding of the need to do something. Last summer was a wake-up call for a lot of um, people from parties where perhaps climate and uh, environment hasn't been sort of on the top of their agendas. And, and there's now a wide understanding of the need to do something and focusing on, for example, fossil free and the carbon dioxide side of it is one way to specialise and to, to direct po policies and politics towards one area where we can actually make change. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.